55. Hopefully, I don't get cut off soon. You probably can see that I'm running low on batteries. Can I get rid of that? Yes. Okay, cool. So, this is less than 55. Forget the date. We're going to find the total area of the shape. So, I don't want to run out of batteries, so pause me. While I do this, students would have come up and said, well, the x times x, the area of this square is x squared. The area of this other one is 3x. The area of this area is 3x. The other area of this is 9. The area of this box is x squared. The area of this box is 1x. The area of this box is 1, and the area of this box is a 1 by x, so 1x. Okay, and then we want to find the total area, so that means adding up the whole area in any like terms. We have x plus x squared, x squared plus x squared. Don't get tricked. We add the coefficient and keep the variable part the same. So 1x squared plus 1x squared, 2x squared. 3x plus 3x plus 1x plus 1x, a total of 8x's. And 1 plus 9 plus 1 is 10. Well, and so that is the area of the total shape if you come up, make it as simple as possible. This is simplified. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so the writing's not that great, but I can still write it. This is 6.6, .6, adding to our notes. Last class, we learned how to multiply polynomials using the distributive property. For example... Um, so we learned that we can multiply x plus 3 times x plus 3 a couple different ways. I introduced you the idea of the error model, which you just saw. You take one parenthesis and put it on the top, one parenthesis put it on the side, and you just find the areas. So, and if we add any like terms, we get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. We get four products. You can get the same by distributing but I like the error model. It's a nice way to show the math. Cool. So directions now are going to ask you to write two equivalent expressions for each expression below and provide evidence what it is. So this one says x plus 3 squared. So with your partner, I'm just wondering, what do you think an equivalent expression to x plus 3 squared is? And you would talk. And then you would say, some students would say um, x squared plus 3 squared. And students, some students say, well, that's x plus 3 times x plus 3. And another student might say, it's well, we know that that's equal to x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. And another student might say, well, that's x squared plus 6x plus 9. So we get four expressions that people think are equal to it. If you said this one, awesome. If you said this one, awesome. This one, awesome. This one is always the question mark. Is x plus 3 squared equal to x squared plus 3 squared? Well, if you can find a number that goes in for x that doesn't make it true, then there you have it. It's not equal. If I put a number in for x here and here, do I get the same thing? If I put 5 in, you try it. Does 5 plus 3 squared, is that the same thing as 5 squared plus 3 squared? Order of operation says 5 plus 3 is 8, so 8 squared is 64. 5 squared, 25. 3 squared, 9. You get 34. So these are actually not equal. It's these if you put five in all of these you will get the same answer okay this is our trick answer people want to think it is but it's not because x plus three squared really means x plus three times x plus three and x plus three times x plus three is both of these right we get four answers we did the error model we get this okay so if we want to know what x plus three squared is we've got to write it out as x plus 3 times x plus 3. So this topic is basically called perfect square trinomials. And perfect square trinomials, well, why do we call them trinomials? 
we'll talk about that. But these are considered perfect square trinomials. The biggest thing is why trinomials, right? A plus B squared, we can write as A plus B times A plus B. And A minus B squared is A minus B times A minus B. The perfect square parts comes from the same thing times itself, right? The same thing times itself. A perfect square is 5 times 5, 25. 25 is a perfect square. Whoops. Okay, so a plus b squared, perfect square. a minus b squared, it's perfect square. But what's the trinomial part? And I think we'll see it in a second, right? Okay, so we're going to be asked to multiply x plus 5 squared. That equals x plus 5 times x plus 5, right? Well, there we go. That's a perfect square. But why is it a trinomial? Well, if we do the area model, or distributive property, you will get four answers. You get x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25. Are there any like terms? Well, sure. So we get x squared 10x plus 25. Oh, so that's why it's called a perfect square trinomial, because I have perfect squares, the same thing on either side, and my answer when it's simplified, how many terms? Three is a trinomial. Okay. So, this again, we have to multiply. What's y minus 3 squared? Take a moment, try it out. See if you can figure it out. Pause me. I'm going to keep going. I'm about to run out of battery. y minus 3 times y minus 3, and we have to keep going. y squared, negative 3y, negative 3y, 9. So we get y squared minus 6y plus 9. And there's a trinomial we need to complete it. Okay, the perfect square trinomials can be a little bit more complex even. 2x plus 3y squared. Again, same idea. 2x plus 3y times 2x plus 3y. Okay, and then we got to take it one more step, multiply, do the distributive property. Okay, are there any like terms? Yes and yes. So we get 4x squared plus 12xy plus 9y squared. There we go. Okay, so these perfect square trinomials are the same thing squared, same thing times itself, and when we do it and simplify, we get a trinomial. Let's see what's next. Hold on. Oh, and there's one other type while we're talking about perfect squares, and that is a difference of squares. Okay. So we have x plus 5 times x minus 5. What do you notice that you know, makes difference of squares a little different than the perfect squares? Well, right, the signs are opposite, right? We have x plus 5 this time and 1x minus 5. So again, if we want to know what that equals, again, area model or distributive property. So we had x minus 5 times x plus 5 equals x squared minus 5x times 5x minus 25. We get x squared plus 5x minus 5x minus 25. But it's not a trinomial because what happens when we add like terms? What's 5x minus 5x? It's zero. So we don't have a trinomial anymore. We have a difference of squares difference, subtraction, x squared and 25 are perfect squares. So I have some practice here. You're going to go to page 437. You're going to do 2 through 16, kind of same thing. Using the error model, you just have to add a step where you write it out as four terms. I meant write it out as, um, for number 2, for example, that this is x plus 7 times x plus 7. 
And then go one more step, you get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Okay. So do that, we'll come back, we'll talk about it. Homework is there as well. So that is the end of lesson 50, what did I say? 55, what?